Let's yank those teeth a little more. Right? So, to do it. It, it was a nice thing too. I, I, one thing that tends to generally irritate me in a lot of folk recordings and acoustic recordings is the need to have more. Like you get two verses into it, then all of a sudden the birds come out, the flutes and the strings. And that's not so much that that's a bad thing. Some songs it really does the trick. But it was just, they did that right in the studio. I said, just cut it like that, you know, and and that's it. It's a very beautiful thing. Well, let's see. Well, let's jump uh, to, I don't, actually, let's do a Darling Corey. This is one that you that these guys were just doing in concert, just because uh, I went down and caught one of their gigs just to see what they sounded like live. So we picked Dom up from the Lancaster train station in a 1991 Chevy conversion van in the dark. <laughs> At, at about, what was it, like 12.30 at night? Or yeah, like, I don't know. Yeah. It was about 9 o'clock, and then we drove him to a, a bar in Lancaster. And hey, that, place was awesome. <laughs> that night was an interesting night. and Not, not many uh, Grammy winners have oh, set foot on the stage of the Dipco in Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, it was kind of a, fun, a funny night, too, because, you know, half oh. the audience left at a certain point. <laughs> oh, but man, that's, where, that's when the dirty songs started coming out there. Oh, man. But uh, let, 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 let's chat a bit with Ernie Tokay, who, who engineered the studio. How do you, uh, uh, now, your, your studio is The Little Spiders Have Big Dreams. Little Spiders yes. Have Big Dreams in Kimberton, PA. <laughs> Well, after I, after I talked to these guys originally, I was put in touch with Ernie. T could you tell me just a little bit about your connection with Hogma and then uh, about your studio, just uh, briefly? Well, Hogma and I met, uh, I was playing a festival in Camp, Camp Jam in the Pines in New Jersey. And I was, uh, it had rained a lot, which it never does at festivals. And uh, I, I, I saw the sign on the tree that said, Werntville. And I said, I know that place. So I walk in and there's Matt sitting there playing bluegrass tuba like, you know, so common. And, and uh, Carla, and we sat down and we, we well, jammed you, you a bit. You don't camp with a tuba? But, um, you know, there were, I was looking for somebody to help me uh, launch and promote my studio because the brick and mortar was all there. All I had to do was fill it with awesome people. And, uh, you know, started talking. These guys had a need, I had a need. We got together and, you know, and eight months later. Eight months later, right. Oh, a quick weekend, guys. Oh, That's how long a proper baby more. takes, you know? So. Oh, and, and, and you, you produced both <laughs> records. You produced the first one and this one as well. So you caught both sides of the coin. Right. Capturing it for us all to enjoy. Yeah, you know, the big thing about recording, especially with a group like Cogma, is people say to me, well, it sounds like you could just hang a mic in front of those people and walk away. And I was like, yeah, it sounds like that, but it isn't like that. You know, so we're a little picky. We it is the most fun I've noise. ever had in my life, though. <laughs> oh. All right, well, let's get a little bit of Darlin' Corey going here. So this is one they were playing in concert, and so you'll see a rise in the tempo of this song. And see, when you guys did in concert, you guys must have done the rise three times. And the audience was like, right on. Then second time, they were like, oh, boy. And then third time, they were like, you know. So we just did one rise on this one here. So let's hear, let's, let's hear a little bit. Face melting, Darlin' Corey. Woo! <laughs> 